Hi, I'm Scott, proud new owner of Dylan's XL750 Reloader. Super excited about it. Today I've got Gary, Dylan's own human manual to help me unbox, unpack, and show off some of the features of this thing. Howdy, Scott. Happy to help. All right, great. Well, let's get to it. Let's, uh, let's pop the top, as you say. Yep. It's like unboxing Christmas presents. Yep. And you'll find that Dylan packaging, like Ogres and Onions, has lots of layers to it. Very cool. So the top layer, you're going to find your manual, your low primer alarm, your tube pack. Wow, so it's all separated by this packing. That's really convenient. Well, we make it that way so that you can compare it in the manual. And on the front of the cover, it shows you everything you should have. So you can make sure everything's there. Because we make a great product, but we are human. Very nice. That one you just set aside. Set this guy aside. All right. And you'll notice that the machine is in a plastic bag so that if your machine is left out in a torrential downpour, you don't have to worry about it being damaged. Man, this is great. This keeps it all, keeps it all really organized. Get this guy out of here. And you can see clearly every component. I love that. Yeah. All right, so as you can see, we have taken the machine out of the box. We laid everything out on the table. We have mounted it to the optional strong mounts, which do not come with this package, but it makes it a lot easier to see what we're doing as we assemble it. Um, Gary, tell us about all the stuff we have laid out in front of us here. We kind of laid things out in the manner that we install them. We've got the case feed post and its hardware, the handle, spent primer cup, the chute bracket for the loaded cartridges, uh, there's a large powder bar that we won't be needing because we're going to be loading 9mm. The actual caliber conversion kit, we'll dive into what's in there a little bit later. Uh, parts to change the primer system over from large to small because all XL750s are shipped set up for large primer feed. It comes with a set of die lock rings in case you don't have Dylan dies and you want to use our handy dandy one inch lock rings. Powder measure, fail safe rod. It comes with a serviceable set of Allen wrenches. This is the post to stabilize the case feed tube, mm -hmm. the case feed tube, the bin to catch the loaded cartridges, the low primer alarm, and then this is just to show you the primer pickup tubes that come with the machine. You get one each, large and small, but you don't use them in the assembly of the machine, so they're just gonna sit here safely out of the way. And I see you also have a really nice full color uh, instruction manual as well, which for me, has always been helpful in the past when assembling something that I've never put together before. Well, and if you don't have me there, it's nice to have to refer to because it does a really good job of walking you through everything that we're going to discuss. All right, so Gary, we got everything laid out in front of us. Where do we start? Well, let's start by attaching the case feed mounting post. That's gonna bolt to the back of the frame. This guy right here, like? Yep, kinda like, like so? that. Okay. You'll notice there's two holes here that correspond with two holes in the frame. Gotcha. So here, let's kinda that's uh, stuff that through there. Hardware there. Okay. It's kind of like so. Like that? Yep. Okay. And same thing down at the bottom. Alrighty. And just kind of work it in there. Yep. Perfect. And then just. So you put the nut there on the other side. Yeah. Nice. We have a 7 16 wrench. Okay. Somewhere. Out Voila. of Felix's bag of tricks. That's right. Had it on standby. Okay. And you don't need to torque it. It's not a small block Chevy. Okay. So just kind of get it snug on there. Yeah. Okay. And this is great. Do you come with the machine to set it up for people? Or? I'm an expensive option. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, so we got this mounted on nicely. Now we're moving on to what? The operating handle. Operating handle, okay, cool. So let's start by taking mounting hardware off. And when you're putting it together, the washer goes on top of the crank. Slide the handle down through it. It's a nylock nut, so it stays tight. Gotcha. So we're gonna get that started. Okay, now if you will go around there, 
get this guy tightened on. Just now, how tight do you usually put this on? You're going to want to snug that down. But okay. in order to do that, if you take one of the middle size Allen wrenches, mm -hmm. there's a hole in the handle. So it allows you to use this as like a T to secure it while you tighten it. Okay. That's, uh, I think we're almost at the end of the road there. Yep. There we go. Awesome. Take out our wrench. Nice. Next step's an easy one. We're going to attach the spent primer cup. It slides onto a sheet metal bracket underneath the priming depriming station. Okay, so, right up front here? Yep, so I'll pull that forward. Gotcha. And just slide this guy with the grooves yep. over the top. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Okay. Next one that we're going to install is the loaded round shoot bracket. This is what guides the loaded cartridges into this plastic bin because it's going to hang like that off the side of your machine. Okay. So for that, we need to remove these two bolts. Okay, good deal. Just these two? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So we just removed the two just on this side? Just on, on this the, side. On the side with the handle. Okay. And this chute goes in between your case feed plunger and the frame. Easy enough. Yep. Then we just and you use the seven sixteenths inch wrench for these bolts that come with the optional strong mount. And like you said, don't over torque these. Same nah, principle just, applies, just kind of snug. Yep, just snug is fine. Nice. All right. Okay, we don't need to worry about changing out the powder bar, so we'll set that back here. Next thing we need to do is we're going to install the caliber conversion kit. Okay, and we're setting this one up for nine millimeter. Nine millimeter. So. Inside the conversion kit, you're going to find the shell plate. You're going to find the powder funnel. This is what the case pushes on to activate the powder measure and flare the case mouth. You're going to find a station one locator. It's the ramp that guides the case into the shell plate. Okay. You're going to have three case feed adapters. These guide the case out of the clear plastic feed tube and in front of the plunger to go into the shell plate. And three locator pins. These are designed to be easy to lift out so you can take a case out of the shell plate at any station without having to unscrew anything. Very nice. And we have some other parts up here on the tool head. Yeah, I was wondering what was in that uh, bag, the packet up on top there. Okay. You've got in here the spring and the pawl, and those go in the ring indexer. That's what advances the shell plate. You've got the detent ball and spring, and that's what locates the shell plate. You've got the actual shell plate bolt and the ejector wire. The ejector wire is what kicks the loaded cartridge out of the bin and down the chute. Ah, okay. So, the first thing we need to put in is the Paul spring. This little short spring goes in this hole in the ring indexer in the back. Next, you have the Paul, which is shaped like a tomahawk. It is directional. If you put it in backwards, the shell plate will not rotate. So you want to put that in that direction. Push down on it. It should pop up and down freely. Next, detent ball and spring go into this hole. There's a lot of clearance cuts around there so that if you get powder or dirt residue in there, it won't jam that. And again, that ball should protrude at least halfway above the top of the platform. This guy right here. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, next, show plate. Number goes on the top. 
Put that on top of there. And with this shell plate bolt, it's pretty straightforward. Screw it all the way down until it stops. Okay. Back it up about an eighth of a turn. And you'll notice I'm pushing down. You don't want very much play, otherwise you won't have primer seating properly. Okay, now if you pull the handle down on the machine. Okay, use a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Goes into a set screw. And you just snug that set screw up. You don't need to torque it. It has a brass tip on the end that deforms to match the curvature of the shell plate bolt. Okay, now that we've tightened that set screw, let's lift up on the handle, make sure the shell plate rotates, cycle the handle a few times to make sure everything indexes reliably. Next part we're putting in is the ejector wire. Now when you put the ejector wire in, this ring goes around the head of the shell plate bolt. This 90 degree bend goes into a hole in the platform. So put it in the hole in the platform first. And then just press it down. Next part we want to put in is the station one locator. This is the ramp that guides the case into the shell plate. Now for when you're using it you're going to want to put a light coating of grease on here because that helps dampen any vibration from cases falling in. Pull this case feed slide to the rear it just drops in. And they are numbered so you can identify them because different cartridges use different ones. The next parts we're going to install are the case feed parts. No particular order to their assembly. This is the adapter that the clear plastic tube feeds into. There's a notch and a extension on here so that it lines up properly. And it is a press fit. Okay. Next, you've got the case feed arm bushing. There are different colors for different cases. So push this over, just falls in. So that one there sized up for nine, obviously. Correct. Okay. Finally, you have the case feed body bushing. And again, there's several sizes depending upon the cartridge you're loading. This threads into the underside of the case feeder. All right, Gary, this is so cool, man, seeing uh, my machine come together. How can I get some hands on? What's next? What can I help okay, with? Okay, next thing we need to do is to swap the primer feed over from the large primer that it comes set up for okay. for small primer because 9 millimeter uses a small pistol primer. Of course, of course, so okay. belly up to the bar. All right. All righty. First thing you're going to want to do, pull the handle down to horizontal. Okay. Full pull? No, not full pull, just, just horizontal. Horizontal like out to here? Yeah. Gotcha. Now, okay. grab this rod and... Pull that to the other side of this roller. Okay, just kind of flip it out. Yeah, it's just panel wire spring. Okay, take this off. All right, just slides out nice slides and easy. Slides out. There we go. And set that down on the bench for now. Okay, now pull the handle down the rest of the way. Okay, full pull now. Got yep. it. Okay, let go of the handle. Now, there's two thumb screws that go over studs that protrude out the bottom of the housing. So gotcha. remove those. Be careful not to lose the washer above them. They're small, they disappear easily. Okay, real little guys, I see those there. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna set these aside in our blue. You might as well use it. Right there, yeah. Convenient. Yes. There we go, got them. Okay. Alrighty, now lift the primer feed body off the top. Okay. Okay, set that off to the side for the moment unhook the coil spring off the underside. If you just pull the slide towards you just a little, now you can just grab that coil spring off that pin. And unlatch just, it from the little post? Just unlatch it from the post, just let it hang down. Got it. Okay, set that one off to the side. Okay. Okay, you're gonna need that black plate, so. So keep the black plate. Yes. And, and it's easy to line up. Back in position there with okay. the holes. Now, you'll notice the cup that he took off for large primers is silver, and the face of the punch is silver. Okay. The one for the small primers, the cup is brass colored, and the face of the punch is brass colored, so it's easy to color differentiate between them. Very good. So what you're going to want to do is put that up into the hole in the platform. 
right into there. Okay, and Got when it. you hold that up there with one hand, now slowly raise the handle so you don't smash your fingers. Okay, all raise the way Raise the up. handle all the way up. Gotcha. Okay, what that does is that locates the cup in the platform, Yeah. which locates the primer slide. Awesome, yeah, I can see it poking so, through right there, good. Now, grab your primer feed body. Okay. Unscrew the knurled cap on the top. and pull out the aluminum tube. That's a magazine tube. The tubes have different wall thicknesses. The th thicker one is for small primer, thinner one is for large primer. The large primer magazine tube has a red tip. The small primer magazine tube has a blue tip. So now grab the tube with the blue tip. Okay. Tip end goes down. And if you notice, there's a ridge on the end of that. I see that. That okay. ridge will line up with a groove inside the housing on the back. So if you drop it in and rotate it and it'll drop down further, okay. put the knurled cap back on. And you only need to put the knurled cap on finger tight. You don't need to torque it down at all. Don't torque it, okay. No need to. Yeah, I love how everything's color coordinated, man. It makes it easy to remember. Yep. Okay, put that over the primer slide and back onto the frame. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Seated right in there. Perfect. Good. Let's reattach your washers and thumb screws. Okay. Yeah, this is exciting, Gary. It gives me a better understanding, too, of how the machine functions and definitely appreciate all the work that went into the engineering behind these. Oh, yeah. That's... Okay, that's on there, and then I imagine... Okay. Now let's reattach that coil spring to the post on the underside of the primer slide. Okay. Okay, hooked right in. Okay. Now you need to reattach the operating rod. Okay. So that bend goes into here just a little bit. Just uh, just the beginning to get it started? Yeah, okay. get it started. And then, again, pull the handle down to about horizontal. About horizontal there. Yeah, and now pull the primer slide the rear. Okay. And this goes in front of that roller. There line it is. Line everything up. So it's on that track and there on that yep. one track. There we go. And cycle the handle several times just to make sure that everything lines up properly. Smooth. Very smooth. Nice. Awesome. Okay. All right. Awesome, man. We got the primer feed all set up, ready to rock. Yep. Where do we go from here, Gary? need to disassemble and then reassemble the powder measure. All right. So there's a powder die on the end of the powder measure that needs to come off. Okay. Use a 5 30 seconds wrench. You loosen these two bolts about halfway out. Oh, okay. You don't need to remove them completely. So just about halfway. About okay. halfway. Okay. Now you lift this half circle collar up. Okay and you should be able to pull that die out. If not, we just need to loosen that a little bit more. Just finger loosen it, okay. Yeah. And All righty, right so out. set the powder measure back down for the moment. Okay. Okay, this die is gonna go into station two in the tool head. Number two, coming yeah, right up. Yeah, the tool head locations are all numbered for easy reference. Perfect, okay, so and locate number two and yep. thread Screw it in. Thread it in about halfway, we wanna start with about eight or nine threads visible above the lock ring. That's good. Just barely finger tight. Very cool. All righty. Uh, next, we're gonna drop the powder funnel inside of the die. The powder funnel is what the case pushes on to activate the powder measure. Mm. And on handgun cartridges, it also flares the case mouth so that it's easier to seat the bullet without damaging it. Very nice, okay, so that serves two functions. Correct. Oh, very cool. So That's grab that and you'll notice there's a here. groove in one end. Okay. That groove then goes up. There's always going to be a number or a letter stamped inside of that groove to identify it. Very cool. Uh, this one, if you look closely, will have a letter F as in Foxtrot for nine millimeter. Okay. Drop that into the top of the die. Perfect. All right, located the F and then drop it just right in the center and drop just it down in. Drop it down, there's a shoulder, it'll stop. On handgun calibers, the funnel will hang out the bottom of the die. On bottleneck rifle cartridges, it does not hang out the bottom. Got it, okay. Okay, okay. the powder measure goes on top of this die. 
Now you notice you've got the lock link assembly here and that's going to have to line up with this fail safe bracket. So you put those so that they're right in line, in with, line each with each from other from top to bottom. Okay, I got gotcha. you. So slide that on top of the die. And now push that clamp in and just finger tighten the screws because you're going to have to adjust that die up or down several threads got it, to make okay. sure that it's adjusted to push the powder bar all the way over and to properly flare the case mouth. Beautiful, man. And again, lining up this component here with the groove down here. Correct. Okay. And of course, we'll make some, some fine adjustments. Yes. All right. Okay, we've got the powder measure attached. Next thing we need to do is put the fail-safe rod on. Okay. This is what actually retracts the powder bar. It does not activate the powder measure. The case pushing up on the powder funnel is what activates the measure. This pulls it back to pick up the next charge. Okay, hence the fail-safe. Right. Okay. So when you put that on, it goes in through the oval hole in the back. It comes out the round hole in the front plate. Okay. And then pivot it around so it just drops down. So pivot that around, All right, drop it down. And now pull the handle down just a little bit. Okay. And that in there. Now lift up on the handle and this white bushing snaps up inside of here we will adjust the height of this blue wing nut and this bushing a little later oh okay cool so the wing nut here you adjust it yes. to elevate it okay all right we got that on so okay. now we're moving on to the stabilizing arm that holds the case feed tube in place okay so just pull that screw out it should be just finger tight And you got two washers there too, so make sure not to lose those little guys, exactly. right? Exactly. All right. We've okay. all done that before. Now, that's where the one hole up here comes through, so it's probably easier to poke that through the hole first. Okay. Then we can line this up. And the function of this piece, Gary? It, if you do not have the optional electric case feeder, right. this is what stabilizes the clear plastic feed tube so that after you've filled it full of cases, it doesn't fall over. Okay, got you. I'm gonna hold this guy here for you. Yeah, that's good now. Alrighty. Nice. That's tightened up. Now, if you're using the optional electric case feeder, yeah. which we strongly recommend, uh, you won't use this. You will take that off. Okay. But we're working with the basic machine here. So next, you're going to install this tube. Now you'll notice that there are arrows. It means this end goes up because this end is beveled, this end is flat. Okay. So this goes down into here and snaps into that. So arrow pointing up should stay pointing up. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, that optional electric case feeder, man, looks like my next upgrade. Very but much so. This is great. So that keeps that on there nice and stable. Yep. Holds that stable. So when awesome. you got it full of brass, it stays upright. Now all we have to do is a little bit of adjustment. Okay. Okay, there's three possible adjustments to deal with here. You've got this cam, which pushes on the pivoting arm to drop the case, and you adjust that by loosening this screw and sliding this cam in and out. We're going to have to possibly adjust the height of this rod because this controls how far the case is pushed into the shell plate, and here we've got an adjustable locator to keep the case from coming out of the shell plate at the priming station. Conveniently happen to have two pieces of <laughs> fired brass because you want a case with a primer in it for making this adjustment. Drop those into the feed tube. All right. Okay, so slowly pull the handle down. We want to watch this pivoting arm. Should pivot over and drop the case. Dropped it right down. Perfect. We then we okay. don't need to make any adjustment. If it did not work, you would loosen this screw and push this cam inward to push that pivoting arm over further. Ah, uh, okay. But we're golden right now, so let's continue. If it ain't so, broke, don't fix it, right? Exactly. Okay. So lift up on the handle okay. and push forward on it because your forward stroke, you're seeding the primer and you're pushing the case all the way into the shell plate. Now you adjust the shell plate, the case feed slide going in by adjusting this rod up or down. Okay, and that's with this screw right here, is that right? No, that would be up here. Up top, okay, So you'll okay. loosen gotcha. this nut and use 
this Allen wrench. Okay. If we have to make any adjustments to it. So this component right here, by adjusting it, can that raise the locator rod? Allows, because that's on an incline, so if you raise this up, it allows the spring to push this plunger in further towards the shell plate. But when you adjust this, you need to have a case with a primer in it in the station two, because the primer punch against the primer is your actual forward stop for the handle. I see it there. If there's okay. no case here, this punch comes up higher and the handle comes in further than it will when you're actually reloading. That makes so sense. So cycle the handle again. Okay, full cycle? Yep, full cycle. Gotcha. And let's bring that second case into play. So now, hold the handle forward. Okay. And visually inspect to see that the case is pushed all the way into the shell plate. If it is not, back this rod up by turning this, you know, Accordingly, and, yeah. yeah, okay. And you don't want there to be a gap down at the bottom. So if there's a gap, then you need to turn that down so that it just touches the top of yeah, that. Yeah, I see that. It's just a fine micro adjustment. Yep. Like um, you said, since it's set, it's pretty yep. much in a good spot, right? And then snug that. Use a crescent wrench just okay. to... Snug this guy up right here? Yeah. Okay. Don't need to Johnny Torque it. It's not a small block Chevy. Right. Perfect. Alrighty. Now, that's adjusted, but we've got this Station 2 locator. Now, this is adjustable for different diameters of cases, because as the shell plate rotates around, centrifugal force wants to cause the case to come out of the shell plate. So that holds it in so place. So you there. adjust it okay. in there. It's not there to push it in because you don't want to tip the case. Right. It's there to keep the case from coming out of the shell plate. Yeah. So this is the part you'll adjust. Put that Allen wrench into that screw. Okay. Put that in there, loosen that slightly. Okay. Now with your finger, push that spring up till it just touches. Just barely. It's not there to push it in, it's there to keep it from coming out. So Got it, just barely touching it. Just kiss it. it and then. Then tighten it back up. Tighten it back down. Oops. So kind of hold it in place with your finger. Yep. And then tighten it. Got Correct. you, got you. Okay. Okay. Last but not least, the little brass locator pins. Those go into the holes in the edge of the platform and that provides you easy access so you can remove the case without having to disturb any of the other cases in the shell plate. And they also keep the case in the shell plate as it rotates. So if you just cycle the handle. That way they don't fly out of there. Yeah, yeah fly perfect. out. Perfect, nice, easy. All right, awesome, man. So we're almost there, Scott. And only a couple more things. It's looking close, man. I'm getting excited. I get to get reload soon. So yes, that's, that's excellent. So what comes next? Uh, the plastic bin that the loaded cartridges fall down. That just slides in. This guy that. right here. Yep. Okay. And it has to come in so it's underneath that chute. Easy, easy. There we and go. And you want to make sure when you push on the handle, it doesn't hit. So anywhere in there. Got is no fine. interference from it. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. So not much there. Okay. Perfect. Easy. The last part is on top of the primer feed. There's a buzzer that lets you know when there are about three primers left in the tube so you can not run out of primers accidentally. Okay. Otherwise you make single use gunpowder salt and pepper shakers. Nobody wants that man. No. no. Okay. So if you grab the alarm, uh, slide the uh, battery cover off first. Okay. Just pop that guy out. Okay. And battery Just goes in plus side to the top, I believe. One AAA in there. Yep. Back in. Okay. Now, just press it over that neural cap. You don't have to tighten or loosen screws. Just push it down. It's designed to be a friction fit. Yeah, just snug little fit there down to flush almost, right? Yep. Okay. Now, just flip that over and it should make an annoying sound when you push on it. There it is. Perfect. That okay, says. Okay, so flip that up for now. Okay. And you have a follower rod, that's what's going to activate it. But we don't want to hear this all day. Agreed. So slide that in first. Okay. Put that in there, flip that up. That way we know it's not going to make an annoying sound at us. Beautiful. And your machine, as it's boxed, is now completely assembled, ready for the next steps. So ready to go. You betcha. Ready to reload, man. I know I am. Almost there. Almost there. Almost. All right. What's next?
Okay, now we've got some options. Now, options, as defined by the dictionary, are things that don't come <laughs> with the machine, but are available for the machine. I like options, what do we got? Ah, uh, we've got a few things. First and foremost, we've got an electric case feeder, which means you're not putting cases into this tube by hand. Yeah, I could see using that for sure. Next option we've got is a bullet tray. Mm -hmm. And it's designed to hold the projectiles at the same level as the cases so that you're not doing a lot of up and down movement with your hand, which helps speed you up. Yeah, very convenient. And we've got a tool holder that bolts to the back of the frame that's got a set of bigger Allen wrenches and a Dillon die wrench. So you don't have to dig for tools to find the stuff you need. I love that. For me especially, because you know my workbench is a mess and I would lose them, I'd like the idea of having all the tools I would need to work on my machine right there. Exactly, because otherwise cool. that's why my bench has stuff that's buried <laughs> and you know, there's archeological layers. Yep, you know, you know. You know how you feel. So what else, what else do you have? Okay, the standard handle that comes with the machine is like you see it, straight shaft with a ball knob. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be doing more than a few hundred rounds at a sitting, we have an optional roller handle. That's it's that, analyzed yeah. aluminum, it spreads it out over a greater surface area, so your, your hand is a little more relaxed. In Dillon blue, right, with that of roller course. handle with the aluminum, I've is seen that. Is there any other color? There is no other blue. That's the only <laughs> blue in my world, man. Very cool. Alrighty, well let's start putting some of this stuff together. Alright, sounds good. So. Let's start adding some options. So okay. the first one is the roller handle. Cardboard sleeve comes off yeah. to protect it from the blue anodizing. The Dillon blue, right? There of it is. Of course. Yes, yes. So first thing we need to do is take this handle off. Okay. Get in there. Go, go gadget wrench. Okay. Okay, flip and that off and grab the washer. Keep the washer in play. There we go. And basically just attach this the same way, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, washer stay on top. Yep. And then just thread this guy on. There we go. Alrighty. Man, that really looks nice on there. So Alrighty, so step Classy, one. Classy, yeah. Next thing we're going to put on is the bullet tray. This is going to speed up your arm movement a lot, and give you a higher rate of reloading. Yeah. So I'm let's, all about that. Let's start off. Okay. We've got the actual cast aluminum bullet tray, steel bracket, hardware. Okay. So start. Let's put all these little. Countersunk screws in here. Just drop them in and just drop them in. Then we're gonna kind of get this to line up so everything fits. Okay. I imagine these guys here. Yeah, fasteners. Those guys just finger tighten those on. Okay. It's in that nice, of course, like you mentioned, Dillon blue. And that aluminum looks great. There you yeah, go. It's a durable powder coated finish. Very nice. Now let's use the Allen wrench and finish. Everybody wants to mount this bracket horizontally. When you're loading you want it to tip forward so the bullets run to the bottom as you run out. So let's line up those holes. Put one of those there through there. So gravity is your friend with the bullet tray. Absolutely. Okay. That looks great on there too, man. It's, oh yeah. That's awesome. Okay, and I'll hold that with the wrench if you'll tighten it. Okay, and just use the Allen wrench that came with the kit. Yeah. Okay. And finger tight, don't have to torque it. Right. Yeah. There we go. Nice, all right, so get that nice finger tight on there. Yep. That looks awesome, man. That's gonna be a huge help too, just that it, much travel between it's grabbing bullets. It's a time-saving device. You're only going from here to here For instead sure. of from here to here. All right, so now something I'm very excited about, man, we're moving on to the tool holder that comes with the wrenches. You can get it with or without the wrenches. With or without, okay. Uh, the nice thing about our wrenches are they're a ball end so that you can get into a screw from an angle instead of having to be straight up and down. Got it. They've got a little bit of grip 
on there. That blue, Dylan blue rubberized and grip, very nice touch. It also has the one inch wrench for the die lock rings. Seven sixteenths wrench is for adjusting the end of the powder bar. That just fits over there. Nice. Turn it, makes it easy. I'm gonna take this off first so you can see better. Okay, very Next, good. the hardest part is lining up the strip with the little numbers. And this right here? Yep. Hey, a place for everything, and then you can put everything in its place, right? Exactly. That Very way you cool. can find it the next time. That, that's my biggest hurdle. Okay, next, because these bolts, as well as this bolt, just happen to fit the 7 oh. and on the Dillon die wrench. It's like they engineered it that way. It's crazy. All right. Random chance. Random chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And not very much at Dillon is random. That's right. Precision tools, man. All righty. Okay. And just lift pull this one out as well. Yeah, just should be able to just lift up on it. There we go. All righty. Now, DP goes outboard. Very nice. Nice engraving. Nice touch. Let's slide these back in. Yep. Assuming you don't drop it repeatedly. Hey. Okay, slide those right I'll back in. Very hold nice. Hold that in place. Okay. And use your Dillon Precision use wrench your, to tighten that back up. Correct. Okay. And like you like to say, don't over torque it. Just finger That's tight. Good. Pretty yep. sturdy. Okay. Same deal on this other side. Beautiful. All righty. Now, we'll slide this back on here. Nice. From the front. And we can start putting these wrenches in their prospective homes. Look at that, man. That way, I like that with the blue, too, on there. You won't confuse it with some of your other Allen wrenches and your other tool sets. Well, that way, if somebody borrows it and doesn't return it, you can easily identify it. Exactly. Man, that and is... And the slot over here. Clean looking. Very nice. And your tool set is now mounted to your machine. It's not going to get buried under layers of Other rubble and detritus and... <laughs> on top of your bench. <laughs> exactly right. Love that. Love that. Super cool, man. So what, uh, what do we have next? The most popular single option for the XL750, the electric case yeah. feeder. So you don't have to drop cases into this tube by hand. You have a little blue guy up on here who's gonna orient your cases right side up, fill the tube, shut the tube off when the tube's full, immediately start dropping cases as a volume in that tube drops again. That automatic case feeder sounds like it just keeps the party going, man. I oh, can't yeah, wait. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, very cool. That's, that's how you get the high speed, low drag part of this. That's it, let's get it on. All righty. Here's that bad boy. There, let's unzip this. There it is. Man, and you know, you have a lot of experience with the machines, obviously, Gary. So what, what would you say is your favorite thing about the variable speed case feeder? Is it just efficiency? Is it just the amount of rounds you can load? Or is it not having to physically manually it's, drop? It's because you don't have to manually drop cases into the tubes. Yeah. It adds an easy 200, 250 rounds an hour to wow. what you would do otherwise. That's huge. That's huge. Man. It's significant. Very cool. So what we have in here, and this is to keep the bowl from getting crushed in shipping. Sure. Hang on to that. That's okay. the set screw that locks the bowl in place and a washer because for some cartridges you have to space the case feed plate up. Got it. We've got the case feeder itself. So let's set that down Take in front. Here. We've got the power supply. All right. That's everything out of the box, those three items, okay? So let's mount this bad boy. Let's so first, mount it. pull the clear plastic feed tube off of there and set it off to the side. Okay, just pull it up and out and yeah. disconnect it from the brace. Correct. Okay. Now, grab your handy dandy 530 seconds wrench, which are all labeled for easy hey, identification. Hey, isn't that something? And let's take this off. Okay. 
There we go. And you can use this as a monopod or uh, you know, give it to your kids to play with at this point. Just so. as a chew toy for the dog, whatever they need. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Alrighty. Set that aside. Set that aside, never to be looked at again. <laughs> good deal, good yeah. deal. We're upgrading. Okay, so now that the case feed post is free of interference, let's take the small pistol case feed plate and you'll notice there's an oval slot in here. That oval slot fits over the motored post, the shaft, and there's a roll pin through there that actually is what drives it. Got it. So, put that on there, get it centered, and it drops down. You'll see it hits the top of the shaft, hits the inside of this upper plate. Now there's a whole bunch of lock washers here. Mm -hmm. and that's because this is adjustable. You want it to be able to turn just a little bit. Just a little bit of play right there. I see that. Just okay. a little bit. Because the idea is that if a case jams in here and you don't notice it, the shaft can still spin so you don't burn out the motor. Very smart. Okay. Smart engineering. Okay. So now, if you'll unzip that bag there. Absolutely. Or men, use tools. That's it. Okay, the washer we won't need for 9 millimeter. If you were going to load, say, 32H in our Magnum, the purpose of that washer is it goes underneath that gray case feed plate okay. to elevate it so that it gets the cases at a higher center of gravity. Got and it. And that's all covered in the machine manual as well. But for nine millimeter, do not need to use do that. Do not need it. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that screw in just a couple of turns just to hold it there. Okay. Just kind of get right there. All righty. And go ahead and slide it over that post. All right. So next, reinstall the uh, clear plastic case feed tube. Arrow side up. Arrow side up. Okay, get that, that tube in there. Snaps the in. Arrow side okay. up. Now, just snug that screw and barely tighten it with a wrench. Okay. And we'll take the one risk of risk our... is if you over tighten it, you'll pull the little helicoil insert out. If that happens, call us at Dylan 800 223 4570 because we just happen to have an oversized insert that you can put into that hole so that you don't have to replace the entire bowl. Okay, nice and snug in there, not over torqued, but it's definitely firm on there. Perfect. Okay. Okay, now we need to make it go. Let's that make it go. That requires electricity. Power, power it up. Okay, on the variable speed unit, you will have power supply. Okay. And what looks strange? Well, it looks like it's missing a uh, the plugs. Yep, because it works for both 220 and 110, 50 and 60 hertz. So it's a matter of finding the right adapter. Very nice. We're in America. We use 110 volt, 60 hertz. So adapters for all the reloaders all over the world there. Exactly. Very cool. And just go uh, down like so, right? Yeah. So okay. if you... Goes in there. And just kind of angle it back and in. Yeah. There it is. That snaps in. Easy. Okay. And then this plugs in over here. Okay. All right. So we got it plugged in and we got our power. Okay. Plugging it in. See it work. Hit the on switch. And because our speed set at zero, it's not going to turn yet. Got it. So, start cranking the volume up. There's a slight delay between how fast you turn this knob before the motor reacts. So give it just a sec on each turn, each adjustment. Okay. It's alive, man. Look at that. Very cool. And your variable speed there kind of just depends on your personal preference and how quickly you reload, right? Yeah, it's a combination of how quick you reload and the length of the case you're, you're loading. That if you're loading sense. a big rifle like a Remington Ultra Mag, 
you're going to run it slower so the case has time to drop and clear yeah. the disc as the disc rotates. And it's taking up more length than that tube as yeah. it's feeding and that makes sense. Handgun cartridges, just you know, turn it and burn it. Very cool, very cool. Man, I'm excited to start reloading. This is, it looks fully kitted out, fully set up now and, and ready to go. The only thing left is the actual specific adjustments, dies, powder measure. Yeah. And we've already covered that in a different video. Yep. But we're not gonna leave you hanging. I appreciate that, Dylan never does, man. You guys are there, not only in person as a human mm -hmm. manual to help me get this set up, my reloader, uh, but amazing customer service as well. And if I have any questions, I can always call in or check out the video tutorials on the website, right? Absolutely.